from uh, uh, Omaha, Nebraska, the CenturyLink Center, uh, for the first major world championship fight. It'll be Native Son and undefeated Terrence Crawford taking on equally uh, undefeated and a, and a multi-world champion himself, Yuri Orcas Gamboa of, Q, of uh, Cuba, taking on... Um, uh, they'll be battling for Crawford's newly won WBO Lightweight Championship. Also on the card, running up the telecast, uh, will be undefeated contenders Matt Korboff, number one in the WBO, and uh, Jose Uzagagwe uh, of number two in the WBO in a 10-round WBO Intercontinental Middleweight uh, title fight. So all together, these gentlemen have a 91-0 record, 63 knockouts. It's, it's uh, on paper at least, a spectacular show. And on with us today, we have uh, uh, Mr. Gamboa, along with Tony Gonzalez, who will be translating for us, and uh, Yvette Gale, who is the Vice President of SMS Promotions. And on behalf of Terrence Crawford, with Terrence, we have his co-managers, uh, Cameron Duncan and Brian McIntyre. And before we get to the fighters and their, and their camps, uh, it's my pleasure to introduce to you the Vice President of Top Rank, who uh, I believe probably matched the undercard of this fight, um, Back in 1972, when Joe Frazier took on uh, Ron Stander, as he called already. Carl? Good, Fred. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, thanks. Appreciate that, Fred. And, and there's no truth to the rumor that we banned Bob from the conference call. Um, Bob is at home resting comfortably from his knee replacement surgery, but I know he'll be uh, watching the show on Saturday night. So we obviously pass along our, our well wishes. Uh, not much to say uh, that what Fred has covered. Uh, four undefeated fighters featured on HBO, uh, a solid middleweight fight to open it up with it's pronounced Jose Uskategi Fred I future reference you. And, Matt, and Matt Karaboff which uh, should be the mandatory for Peter Quillen the victor and in the main event uh, the hometown kid Terrence Crawford makes his first defense of the title that he won over in Scotland against Ricky Burns against uh, you know one of the best amateurs ever and, and clearly a solid pro and, and worthy contender for this title Yorkus Gamboa so uh, without further Further ado, Fred, well, let's open it up for questions and see what we got. All right, before we do that, um, uh, Tony, if we could uh, get a few comments uh, from Mr. Gamboa uh, now that he's in Omaha, how, how things went in training camp and what he anticipates happening this Saturday night. Ya que está en Omaha, Yuri, ¿qué que nos puede decir sobre el campo de entrenamiento y la anticipación que se tiene para combate? Bueno, hemos realizado todo lo los preparativos que se está haciendo para este para esta preparación y estamos ya ansiosos porque la pelea no yeah, I'm very anxious to get to to the fight uh, luckily throughout training camp I met all the objectives I needed for for a game plan for this fight and I'm just excited to get back into the ring this Saturday terrific and uh, before we bring Terrence on let's uh, let's hear a few minutes from uh, the, his co-managers uh, Cameron I'll let you go first followed by Brian I'm just really excited for Terrence and, and Brian both. Um, they were out in Omaha, and, and uh, you know, they've come so far, and, and uh, we had a plan all along Did that we would get here, and a lot of people thought we were crazy, and, uh, and we're here, and uh, I'm really, really excited for them. Look for a great fight. Yembo is a great fighter, and um, going to be a terrific fight. Brian, any comments? Yeah, I just want to... Uh you know, just say, tell young boy thanks for accepting the fight. Uh, I'm excited for Terrence to showcase his talent, his skills uh, on on this level again and in his hometown. I'm expecting a great fight. Thanks, Brian. Terrence, welcome home. Uh, I had the uh, the pleasure of speaking with Ron Stander just the other day, and he was conveying to me the excitement. Of, of having a, a hometown challenge against Joe Fraser back when they fought 42 years ago. Now, it's a little different for you because you're actually defending a title where he was fighting for one. What's, how are you feeling leading up to this fight this Saturday night? Well, I'm feeling good. You know, uh, I'm feeling ready. Uh, this is what I've been asking for all along, and now that we're here, you know, I'm just ready for the moment. Sounds great. Um, operator, we're ready to take questions if you'd like to give the media instructions on how to ask. Ladies and gentlemen, if you would like to ask a question, please press the number one key on your telephone. Again, if there are any questions, please press the number one key on your telephone. Our 
first question is going to come from Dan Raphael with ESPN. Please go ahead. Thank you very much, hello everybody. Uh, Terrence, uh, my question for you is, when uh, when you won the title in uh, Scotland against Ricky Burns, uh, were you were you thinking that you you know you saw the hometown support that Burns had there? Was it in your mind that your first defense of the title would be in Omaha? I know Bob Aram had talked about that, but is that what you thought would happen? And how important was it to you personally to be able to come home for the first defense and uh, and defend your title? Yeah, you know uh, that was my goal. You know to make my first defense uh, in Omaha. And, you know, I was real pleased with Bob keeping his word. And uh, now that we're here, you know, I'm just happy for everything. Me, my city, my family, and my fans that never got to see me perform live, you know, professional-wise. You know, I'm just ready for the moment. Now, is it, is it, has there been any, uh, you know, you hear about guys fighting at home. Sometimes there's distractions. Everybody wants to call you up for tickets. Everybody wants you to, you know, to, to, to be around. Are you, are you feeling any of that? And if so, uh, are you able to, to close it out? And, Brian, if you could address that, too, because you see what goes on there every day. And you also talk about the, if, if there are any distractions, how your camp is handling that. Aaron, you can answer that well, first. Well, no, nah, you know, I don't handle none of that. You know, no, no selling tickets, no shirts, no... <laughs> No nothing, so they can't call me for nothing. So I'm not, I'm not worried about the distractions around. Brian, well, uh, we already uh, have a game plan and uh, uh, planned out um, what everybody's job is going to be as far as the ticket goes, the search goes, um, any distractions or anything of that nature to keep in camps, you know. Secluded to where you need to concentrate. Uh, we talked about that months in advance, and, and we right, right now we're just executing the plan. Hey, uh, Terrence, had you, uh, Fred mentioned in the opening remarks, this is the first world championship fight in Omaha in 42 years since Joe Frazier defended the heavyweight title. Uh, as a kid that grew up in Omaha uh, and boxes, had you ever heard of that fight or have any knowledge of that fight or, you know, its, it's uh, significance in the history of boxing in, in Nebraska? Or is it news to you? Oh no, it was it was new to me. I never uh, knew about it, you know, uh, until like a few years back, you know. But I know now. And that's all that matters. Um, one other quick question for you, Terrence. Uh, when I watched the press conference between you and Gamboa, uh, it seemed to me that you were much, much bigger than uh, than uh, your Yorkus was. Uh, you know, he's a former featherweight. Now he's up at lightweight. Did you feel like uh, that, the, that the size difference, uh, at least in terms of the height, is going to play a big factor in the way the fight plays out? And well, yeah, like I tell everybody, you never know. You know, uh, that boy is a real skillful fighter. You know, he probably can make adjustments like me, you know, in the ring. And uh, we'll just have to wait to fight night to see what, what happens. Okay, and uh, Tony, could you ask uh, Yuri Arcus the same question? Did he... You know, he's a lot shorter than uh, than Terrence is. I'm wondering, uh, you know, he's not, he's usually shorter than his opponents, but not that much shorter, it seems to me. Could you ask him if he thinks like that might be any kind of factor for him in this uh, in this challenge for uh, Terrence's title? I, I, I answer the question by just going back to my own professional history as to, you know, I, I've been pretty much the small guy in most of my fights. So uh, I don't think that that's it's something that really is going to affect much. You know, I know how to adjust and I know how to come, come with a game plan, and, and it's something I've, I've been dealing with ever since my amateur career. I've always been the smaller guy. And is the layoff going to impact him? He has fought one time in 2012. One time in 2015, la, this will be his first fight in over in a year. La, la pelea en dos años, esta va a ser la tercera. ¿Eso tú crees que también puede afectar? Honestly, no. I, I, just basically, as long as I'm focused, I have stayed active. I know I have stayed active. Maybe not in fights, but, you know, doing what I need to do outside of the ring. You know, I think I'll be ready for the next I know I'll be ready for this Saturday. Okay, fellas, thank you very much. Have a great fight Saturday.
next question comes from Keith Idek with the record. Please go ahead. Oh, yes, I have questions for Terrence and your Yorkis. Uh, Terrence, I'm just wondering what you make of the way Gamboa has gone about um, trying to tweak you a little bit on Twitter. I mean, he's kind of said some weird, uh, tweeted some weird things to you, some inappropriate things. Just wondering what your thoughts on that are and what you think maybe he's trying to get out of that. Well, I just look at it as, you know, it's good for the sport of art. You know, uh, that's something that uh, he wants to do, you know, but that he wants to do. I don't take it in any personal. I don't take it in any offensive or nothing. I'm going to go in there and, you know, on Saturday, instead of texting, we're going to be looking eye to eye, you know, away from each other, and there's nothing you can text. I agree and everything, but how good of a fighter do you think he is, and what type of different challenges does he present to you than Ricky Burns did? Well, he's, a, he's going to be a good challenge, you know. Uh, he's, a, he's, a, he's a great fighter, you know, like myself. You know, he posed the... I never got hit by him, so I can't pay power. You know, uh, you just have to see fairs. How is he... T I mean, obviously you're fighting this in your hometown as opposed to the other fighters' hometown and everything, but how is this different than the Burns fight? Uh, obviously they're very different fighters. Can you maybe tell me some of the... The different challenges that he presents to you? Well, um, like I said, speed, you know, uh, he got he got he got a little amateur experience, you know. But at the same time, I really can't say because they're two different fighters, you know, one tall, one short, one faster than the other, you know. Uh, so they they fight two different styles. I know you have to put a lot of this out of your head because, of course, you have to focus on the fight. But uh, just in general, can you tell about how uh, maybe proud you are and excited you are to bring this type of event to your hometown? And I know it's something you probably wanted your, you know, your whole life. I was very proud, you know, that uh, my managers, you know, Cameron Duncan and Brian McIntyre and uh, my promoter, they came to see eye to eye. They did the job, uh, you know, and I'm just blessed to have this here in Omaha right now. Uh, thank you, Terrence. I have a question for Yuri Orcus as well. Uh, can you ask Yuri Orcus, what, um, does he kind of feel like it's uh, Saturday night or never for him in the respect that, you know, he's not really young anymore in boxing and hasn't maybe built the momentum that, he, that his talent says that he should? Does he kind of feel like this is his opportunity to take that next step or maybe it might ever never happen for him? You know, it's like like anything in, in, in a career, obviously it's a, a defining moment, and I'm, I plan to take full advantage. Does he think that, I, I, he's fought some talented guys, does your just feel that, that Terrence is the, that, where does he feel Terrence ranks among that, although I'll probably be able to answer that better after Saturday, but where does he think he is talent-wise? Among the guys that he's fought. <coughs> en su opinión, entre los que tú has peleado, obviamente vas a tener una mejor opinión después de la pelea del sábado. Pero viendo así el rival que tienes ahora enfrentándote que en Terence Crawford, ¿cómo tú lo categorizas entre todos los rivales que tú te has enfrentado? Definitivamente, hasta que no tengamos un combate, podemos ir a cambiar y conocer lo que tú haces al rival por nuestro punto. Honestly, just like you said, uh, uh, until I fight him on Saturday, I can't really respond or answer that question. Thank you very much, guys. Our next question comes from Lynn Satterfield with Ring TV. Please go ahead. Hey, how you guys doing? Hey, Lynn. Hey, um, I want to go back to something that Dan mentioned about the uh, distractions. Um, I, I remember talking to De Devin Alexander uh, the week of his fight with Lucas Matisse in St. Louis, and he said as soon as he, him and his manager, uh, landed, they had, you know, St. Louis sports teams there. Uh, there were demands on appearances and stuff like that. And I'm wondering, um, uh, Cameron, uh, Brian, and, and Terrence, how you manage the demands of the promotion locally, especially that being, you know, the first fight there in so long, and, uh, and how do you balance that and handle that? Well, uh, we didn't have all that here. 
you know, uh, we've been keeping a low profile. You know, when we got back in town, you know, uh, it wasn't a big entourage. We actually didn't let anybody know when we were coming back in town. So, you know, uh, it's been kind of cool. You know, we just chill and wait on the fight. Cameron, do you have any... Uh any take on that? I mean, I know he's probably gotten demands for appearances to talk about the history, to talk about the fight. No, I leave, I leave that up to Brian. He lives there. These, these guys have lived there their whole life. And Brian and I were concerned about it, and we had long talk about it. And, you know, he said, I'm going to set everything up, and I'll keep all distractions. And we talked about it. We, we were concerned, but uh, Brian did a great job. He put everybody, you know, in different jobs around him. And, and so Terrence is just focused on the fight and ready to go. And, and um, you know, no, he hasn't had any distractions. Yeah, Brian assures me he's ready to fight. Terrence, I know you obviously have a sense of the magnitude of this fight just from the knowledge, but do you have a sense when you walk around, when you, you know, just doing your daily travels in between training um, of what the community is feeling? Because I know I have a nephew who lives there, and he's like on Facebook two, three times a week asking me about the fight. Yeah, I have a sense, you know, uh, what the magnitude of the fight is. You know, uh, this is real big, not only for me, but for the city of Omaha, Nebraska. You know, uh, I feel like I give not only boxers, but other people and that's trying to, you know, push for and to doing something positive with their stuff. I give them hope and, you know, uh, I this that they can... Uh, be wherever they want to be. All they got to do is, you know, believe and work hard at Okay, thanks a lot. And um, as far as your style, you know, I've, you know, people call you a switch hitter. You know, people say you're a southpaw. How do you characterize your style? Because I know you have a really good uh, right jab. So I just look at myself as, you know, all around by that. I don't look at myself as one dimensional. I feel like, I can change up in a lot of ways in the ring, and, you know, I just feel like I'm flexible. Okay, thank you so much, Terrence, and uh, I have uh, a couple questions for Yuri Orkis. Tony, you there? Hey, Lam, how you doing? I'm oh, great. How are you, Tony? Um, great, thank you, man. I don't see anyone on Yuri Orkis' uh, resume um, with the combination of range, and, you know, kind of boxing ability, you know, and his height. Plus, you know, you, you know the youth um, in this situation. Can you ask him to characterize how Terrence, you know, compares to the different guys he faces and what the challenge, the challenge is for him on Saturday night? I think he kind of semi-answered that in the previous question. They asked him to compare him to other to other um, fighters, and he said until he fights him, we really can't give a fair assessment. What about his uh, his ability to change up? Can he talk about that aspect? Hablar sobre el el la habilidad de Crawford puede cambiar de de guardia en transcurso una pelea. ¿Cómo es una ventaja o desventaja? Eso es algo que que normalmente muchos boxeadores a veces hacen. Otros tienen una mala una mala habilidad de poder it's part of the sport. You're, you're going to face guys that obviously are going to be able to switch up on you. Some, you know, are going to be able to really, you know, master both the, the South South stance and the Orthodox stance, one better than the other, but it's something you got to deal with when you're in the sport. You know, you're going to face different challenges. It's just a matter of getting prepared to, to address those challenges. My last question for him, Tony, is when, when, if ever, uh, is the last time he can remember where he's going into the other guy's territory and he's obviously going to be uh, facing a hostile crowd um, as the challenger or as the, some people say, uh, even B-side in this promotion? And uh, when Que es la última vez que tú te recuerdas y yendo al patio de un rival, como en este instante, eh, en la que cual obviamente eh, puede crear un, un tipo de ventaja en, en esta pelea. Que tú te recuerdes. 
In Kazakhstan, the last time that I can remember. We were in the amateurs. It's been that long? Así, así de largo, de tiempo. Así de largo, de tiempo. Así de Queríamos conocer acerca de tu preparación y tu planteamiento para la pelea. 
Bueno, realmente esto es algo que eh, ha sido una continuidad en, en nuestra carrera deportiva a través de los años, eh, enfrentando a, a boxeadores más altos. Eh, lo que hemos hecho es eh, hacer una buena preparación con boxeadores de, de mayor estatura para llegar a cabo y adaptarnos a, a la forma de, de entrar en el combate, en ataque y contraataque, eh, similar a, a, a lo que va a pasar en la pelea con, con el boxeador profe, ya que también tiene una estatura alta. Okay. Y por último, hablar un poquito sobre el ambiente que hay en Omaha para esta pelea, porque como bien lo han dicho, es el primer combate de título mundial en mucho tiempo allá. ¿Cómo está la expectativa? ¿Cómo ve al público, la gente de la ciudad? Bueno, realmente he visto mucha emoción aquí en la parte de lo que es las redes sociales, ya que físicamente no he visto a nadie personalmente. Eh, sí sé que han habido personas allá abajo tratando de tener una oportunidad de una foto conmigo, pero hoy he estado en, en el horario de descanso. Pero por lo que veo, eh, se ha emocionado mucho a esta gente y me han dicho por el, las redes sociales que, que yo no me imagino la cantidad de cubanos que hay aquí y que van a venir apoyando. Yo por esa parte estoy muy orgulloso. Muchísimas gracias por todo y mucho éxito. Gracias. I think we have time for maybe two more questions because both these gentlemen have media workouts today. We don't want them to be late for that. So, operator, if we can go two more and then we'll okay. wrap up the call. All right. The next one will come from Carl Freetag at Fight News. Please go ahead, sir. Hello. This is a question for Terrence. Um, I talked to Gamboa, Gamboa about a week ago, and he told me that... Uh, I asked him about fighting a, a tactical fighter with a style like yours, and he said he's been fighting fighters like that his whole life um, in Cuba, and that uh, that style is no problem for him. I'd like to ask you um, what you think that you're going to show him that he hasn't seen before. Hello? Did, did you get that? Hello? Hello? He's translating. Hello? Yeah, it's not freaking boy, that's the only question I have a problem with, right? Terrence? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it was funny. Okay, did you get that question? You need to repeat Yeah, yeah I got it. Okay. Like, uh, um, yeah, like, we're going to have to uh, wait till Saturday, you know. Um, the guys that he's probably fought and seen, I'm pretty sure that they don't have the same style as me. They probably have similar styles, but I don't feel like there's no one out there with the same exact style as me, so we just gonna see Saturday. Okay, thanks a lot. And one more question, operator? Okay, our final question of the day will come from Jay Calderon at 12rounder.com. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, uh, hello, everyone. Uh, the, this question goes for both, for both guys. You, um, you are on paper pretty much identical in terms of record. You guys have faced a relatively similar level of opposition. What do you think about your style will be the, the one thing that allows for victory? This goes for both. Thank you. Uh, was, that, was that for me? I think it's for both. Terrence, why don't you go first? You said, how will my... Uh, can you repeat the uh, question? Uh, due to the fact that your resumes are both similar, what do you think the one thing that you bring to the table will allow for victory? Uh, just me being myself, you know, uh, me going in there and fighting my fight. Tony, could you ask the same of Yuri Orcas, please? I just did. Oh, okay. I don't know if you're going to respond. Thanks. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I would say that, that my boxing IQ is, is, I think, is very high. That's one thing that, that a lot of people underestimate in me. Um, obviously, my, my physical abilities also give me a, an edge, I think, in a lot of the fights that I go into. Um, my speed, my reflexes, and, and a combination of all those things, I think, is going to lead me to a, a victory this Saturday. All right, thank you very much. Thank you, and thank you, everybody. I'm sorry we haven't appreciated the call today, but um, everybody's hustling off to their media workouts, which will begin uh, shortly uh, in Omaha at B&B Gym. Uh, we'll get some last-minute comments. Um, Yuri Orcas, uh, last comment uh, to the media before you head off? <laughs> Tony, are you still there? 
Terrence, any last comments from you uh, before we uh, hang up? Well, my comment is, you know, um, good luck to Gamble in this camp. You know, we we gonna be ready. So be ready. And for all the fans out there, you know, uh, support me and Gamboa. Buy your tickets to the fight. Watch the fight. However you support it. Thanks for having me. Thank you, Terrence. Uh, Carl, any last words? No, uh, we'll have an update. You know, I think you're going to put a release out either Thursday or Friday morning on an update on the tickets, just that we've opened up the upstairs. And, um, you know, obviously this is a, a hot event here in Omaha, and we're looking forward to it. And for those of you who cannot make it in Omaha, you can see it live on HBO beginning at 10 p.m. this Saturday night. It's uh, Crawford Gamboa, two undefeated fighters with identical records fighting for the WBO Lightweight Championship. The first fight in 42 years coming out of Omaha, Nebraska. You'd have to go back to 1972 when Joe Frazier defended his title for the last time against Ron Stander. Uh, we look forward to seeing everybody uh, at the press conference tomorrow. And for those of you who cannot make it, we hope you tune in and watch it live on HBO Saturday night at 10 p.m. Thanks for joining us. Thanks all.